Hey, good if good evening, everybody. Uh, Adam Levy, all the way from Antigua. Uh, that is in the Caribbean, for those of you that aren't aware. That's why we've got such a tan going right now. And uh, just glad to be able to hop on and do our Tuesday night live Zoom, which we do at 8 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday evening to kind of go over some things that are hopping and popping over at CTFO and uh, I uh, just wanted to go through a quick list of things, and, and I, I have uh, some things I wanted to share with you. First off, if you haven't seen Dr. Robin Sika's interview with David D'Archangelo that happened just a few days ago, I highly recommend you watch it, but also use this as a tool um, to get people to get on our ultimate multivitamin. Anybody who watches this, I mean anybody, this is one of the best interviews I've ever seen her do, um, and it is, uh, David does a great job of interviewing her, and, and really, I think anybody that watches this is going to want to be on and, and understand the, uh, the ultimate multivitamin, and it's really such a great building block, you know, for our business, because the reality is you got to be able to find some things to put on smart chip that you can't live without, and everybody, you know, takes a multivitamin or should be taking a multivitamin. And if they're taking one and it's not ours, well, you got to have them see that video. And once they see that video, they'll start taking ours. Um, and, you know, that's something that people will take for a lifetime. So you want to talk about residual income. It's one of the key building blocks that's so important in our business. So use Dr. Robin Sika's video. I think I posted it on Biz Builders. Also, there's emails. Uh, that have been coming from the company on that uh, and you're going to see a lot more about that but it was really great to get a brand new recording of uh, dr robin Sika talking about the ultimate multivitamin in this day and age um, march promotion going on that's something that was just announced of course today being march 1st um, and it is in relation to the fast start bonus and what they've done is they've added an enroller match of 25%. So what that means is anybody that you personally enroll between February 28th, which was yesterday, and April 3rd, okay? So you've got um, pretty much, right? The entire month of, of March. Anybody that you've enrolled or enrolls that gets in on the fast start bonus earns 200 bucks, earns the additional 300 bucks earns the additional uh, 500 bucks for a total of a thousand dollars right that's available in fast start bonus you're going to get a 25 percent match so if they earn 200 bucks right because they hit 1k you're going to get 25 percent that's not bad right that's 50 bucks as they were enrolled right if they earn a thousand bucks you're going to earn 250 bucks extra because you're their enroller so that's a pretty amazing um, little bonus that they've just announced. I wouldn't be surprised if they do that more often in the future. And who knows, maybe that'll become something part of the comp plan at some point, but that's a pretty cool bonus. And it puts a lot of incentive on you to help your new person get to, you know, get to that next level uh, when they're first getting started, which is really kind of nice. More money in it for you as well as them. All right, um, so I wanted to cover something real quick. I'm gonna share my screen and a topic I wanted to cover tonight. Let's see if I can find it on my screen. Uh, must be this one, yeah, okay. All right, so I wanna talk a little bit about, about networking uh, with Facebook and, and social media. Um, when people friend you or when you friend somebody, what do you do? How do you say hi to them? What do you do to connect with them? And I hit up somebody, it was a, it was a, somebody Michael Allison had mentioned to me. And so I went to go check him out, somebody that he was kind of prospecting and he was a networker. And I thought, well, let me, let me go check him out. And I did it and I sent him a friend request. And this is what he sent me back. He sent me an audio message. And I want you to listen to this audio message.
but I think it was one of the best examples of what to do when somebody sends you a friend request. And here it comes. See, hopefully you can hear it. Hey, Adam, happy Sunday. Hope you're having an amazing weekend. I want to thank you for reaching out and connecting. Checked out your profile. You have some really great content there. And it looks like we've got some friends in common. Just curious what you're up to these days. Hope everything's well. Pretty soon the spring will be here. Hope you didn't get hammered with too much snow up there in Connecticut last week. Take care. Have a great day. Look forward to learning more about you. You guys all hear that? Yeah. Okay, great. So think about this message. I've never talked to this guy before, right? I just friended him up. You know, I had an intention to friend him up because, you know, Michael had mentioned him to me and we were, you know, maybe going to be talking to him at some point. Um, but there's a guy that's doing this with, I'm sure, anybody who ever friends him, right? And it, let's talk about what it, what goes on in that. And we can play it again if you want. But he took the time to record that message. He took the time to look at my content, or at least he says he did. Who knows if he actually did, but he says he did. He took the time to see that we had some friends in common. He took the time to know that we uh, that I'm in Connecticut, right? So he did. He looked. He, he apparently looked at my you know profile and said, "Oh, this guy looks like a guy I want to know." And boom, right? And and so then I sent him a message back because I thought it was a great message. And my message back to him was. Hey, Tom, Adam Levy, uh, really great to uh, get to hear your voice and um, looking forward to connecting with you as well. Uh, I believe Michael Allison and I are uh, the common friends that we have in common. Both of us are working really hard at CTFO, are really smart actually. Uh, things are going extremely well um, and it is just a great time to be working for oneself these days, um, which I'm sure you're well aware. Anyway, um, hope you're doing well. Again, thanks for reaching out. Uh, my wife and I were headed to Antigua for nine days, uh, and so um, we'll be uh, we'll be posting some pictures, I'm sure, and uh, maybe we can connect when we get back. All right, have a great one, and we'll talk soon. So that's what I sent him back, <clears throat> and I knew I was going to be away, but you know, I wanted to get right back to him. I think I did it the very next day, and I sent him a message. You know, again, letting him know specifically that the reason why I friended him up was because we had somebody in common that I'm working with together. Again, posture, right? I don't want to lead this guy on to think that he can recruit me, right? I'm letting him know that, yeah, no, things are going really well. I'm going to Antigua for nine days, looking for, you know what I mean? I, 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 ha I wanted to have that a posture so that you know he knows that uh, I'm not available for him to recruit necessarily, but that maybe you know Michael and I should talk to him at some point, and uh, uh, maybe he's open. You never know, right? And then he wrote, "Safe travels, my new friend," and I put a smiley face in there, and that was the whole conversation. But I really loved the message that he left, and I think that you know. We friend people and, you know, we just, uh, you know, who, you never heard from them again or, you know, why are they, how, I have 2000 friends on Facebook. I assure you, I did not leave them all a message like that, <laughs> right? But it's, uh, it's very personable. It's very relatable. I think anybody can do it. And uh, it's something that uh, you might want to put into your arsenal when it comes to friending people. And, you know, I friended him and he left that message. I imagine that uh, had he friended me, um, I could leave a message like that, or I could have left a message like that once he accepted it. Because a lot of times you'll friend somebody and they'll accept your friendship and then nothing happens there either. So either way, whoever did the friending first, Tom's message, this first message. Hey, Adam, happy Sunday. I hope you're having an amazing weekend. I wanna thank you for reaching out and connecting. Checked out your profile. You have some really great content there and it looks like we've got some friends in common. Just curious what you're up to these days. Hope everything's well. Pretty soon the spring will be here. Hope you didn't get hammered with too much snow up there in Connecticut last week. Take care, have a great day. Look forward to learning more about you. 
you know, and, and I don't know how successful Tom is as a networker, but I do know he's doing some of the right things just from my experience with that one interaction, right? And so there's a guy you want to have on your team. There's somebody that, you know, already knows how to network using social media. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to point that out. It was something that really stuck out for me. I know Michael Allison leaves messages that are similar uh, as well, and uh, maybe he'll do a training on that at some point. But uh, I just thought that, that was uh, something I wanted to share with you guys tonight. All right, let me just stop sharing my screen. And okay, fantastic. Did you guys appreciate that? Is that something that was helpful? Yeah, okay, good. Excellent. So we have a few more people that have joined us. Fantastic. All right, so lastly, or not, I don't know if it's lastly, but certainly next, um, Lisa and I, we were at a, um, a historic uh, dockyard called Nelson's Dockyard in Antigua for dinner the other night. And there seemed to be somewhat of a crowd that was forming um, at the dock. Um, and find out that the very last um, people who enrolled in this um, this race were coming into the dock. So they were the very last people uh, uh, in the race. Uh, and it was a transatlantic rowing team. Now, I'm not sure if you've figured, if you've seen this or even heard of this, didn't even know this existed, but these gals rowed a boat, no other power source, no sails, no engines. I think they have an autopilot just to make sure that they, they don't have to worry about steering, but all propulsion is them rowing, okay? From the Canary Islands to Antigua, okay? About 3,000 miles. I wanna share with you what happened um, and see if I can share my screen and play it so you can see this as it happens. Sharing that, okay. Okay, so there they are. They've just come into port, and this is what happens. The Marina and Sonia Project X. So anyway, um, this was a complete coincidence that we were there at this time. They came in last place. It took them 75 days, okay, 75 days from the Canary Islands to row to Antigua. Now, <laughs> a lot of lessons can be learned here, first of all. They came in last place. Do you think they really cared that they came in last place? <laughs> no, they just rode the Atlantic, right? <laughs> we were talking to them afterwards, Lisa and I, because they, they were actually eating a real food dinner on like dry land for the first time in 75 days at this restaurant. And so we got a chance to chat with them a little bit. And we asked, you know, why do people do this, right? What What is it that, and, and, she, and they told us, they said, well, some people, you know, they do it for different reasons. Um, you know, I wanted, she, one of the girls said, I wanted to lose 25 pounds, <laughs> which she did. I said, congratulations, by the way, there's easier ways of doing that, <laughs> right? Um, another one said, I just, I just, you know, I just wanted the t-shirt, <laughs> okay, <laughs> right? So they get a t-shirt, of course, the t-shirt, you know, they're not wearing them here, but basically the t-shirt says something like, I rode the Atlantic, you know what I mean? And so um, that was another reason why people did it. But, you know, we asked them, I, we asked a lot of questions like, you know, 
how do you, you know, the water and, and, and uh, you know, food. And they have a desalinization plant on board, so they're turning seawater into drinking water. Uh, but food, they got to bring everything with them that they're going to need. Everything. There's no supply drops. You can't go fishing, right? They're two hours on, two hours off. Two hours on. There's only two of them in this boat. Two hours on, two hours off the entire time, right? And ask them a question, you know, uh, did you ever feel like you wanted to quit? Right? And uh, they were, they, they had a very quick answer. They said, well, how can you, what, were we gonna just throw the oars in the water and say, I quit? I mean, what, you, you can't quit. There was no quitting. There was not like a, 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 chase, a boat chasing them, a safety boat, right? No, they were in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean for 75 days. You know, there's no quitting. So, you know, I, I just likened it to, you know, our business a little bit in that there's people that quit all the time. And it's, it's, it's just too bad because there are things that people do in life that are just so much harder. I would simply, if you think this business is hard, try rowing the Atlantic for 75 days, right? I mean, and these guys were just really inspirational that way. Uh, one of the questions we asked was, what, uh, what was the most uh, impressive thing you saw in those 75 days? What was the thing that left the biggest impact? And they said, oh, easy. There was one night when it was completely dead flat, the water and the stars in the sky were reflected on the ocean. And so they shut off their, all their electronics, they shut off everything they possibly could just so they could be in this, this you know, planetarium, which had no top or bottom because the stars were in the ocean, the stars were up top, it was just complete darkness in the middle of the ocean. And then when they put their oar in the water, marine phytoplankton would glow. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Absolutely incredible. So anyway, we met these gals, or they were like 30 something, uh, either late 20s or early 30s. And uh, um, the, the name of the, if you want to see them online, it's Project X. Project X is the name of their vessel. And uh, anyway, so I just, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they, they had brought it up. They said, you know, you know, people tell me, you know, they say, you know, there's people going through tough times in life and, and, uh, and yeah, there are, you know, this is, but, um, you know, you want to try to do something really hard, row the Atlantic <laughs> from one side to the other, right? Um, it just puts things in perspective. Anyway, uh, hopefully you found that interesting. And, uh, you know, we, we were just enamored by these ladies and, uh, just couldn't believe that people actually would set out to do something like that. And, and apparently there were 37 teams that set out. I think the, the quickest one did it in like 34 days. And, uh, and they did it in 75. They came in last and we just happened to be there when it happened. So anyway, that was kind of fun. So with that, um, anybody have any questions or things that they would like to add? You can unmute yourself if you want. And uh, here we go. All right. Everybody seems to be in good shape. I don't see anybody's hand up. <laughs> oh, Malcolm, go ahead. What is the temperature down there right now? <laughs> good question. Um, right now, even at night, it's about 79 degrees. And during the day, it's about 85, 86, something like that. Yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. We hiked to the highest point, or the second highest point, I should say, in, uh, in Antigua uh, yesterday. We went on that hike, great hike, got to see, uh, I think I recorded from up there, so you can kind of see yep. around and, um, you know, hike through a rainforest. And uh, it was just, it was really, really nice to get some exercise while we're here, you know, real exercise. Because there's a lot of food, you know what I mean? <laughs> when you go on vacation. So, but good question, Malcolm. Well, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to completely rub it in a little bit more than you already have. That's all. I, I, listen, I'm, somebody has got to live this lifestyle. Right? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Appreciate that, Malcolm. <laughs> um, and look, that's what we do this for, right? 
you know, we do this business so that we can have the freedom of lifestyle to, you know, head out on a Wednesday and not have to ask anybody, go to a tropical island, you know, spend some time and, uh, you know, get away from the day to day so you can think at higher levels, right? Yes. It's hard to, it's hard to, to create new ideas and, uh, you know, uh, to get out of your own thoughts when you're in the day to day routine that you go through all the time. I got to say, one of the things that, that, you know, inspired me was seeing the mega yachts, the sailboats and the mega yachts that are here. That's a whole nother level of rich. <laughs> it has you relook at your reevaluate your goals when you see the, the potential of what some of these what real wealth crazy real wealth looks like you know and uh and that's that's you know it's humbling at the same time it's inspiring and uh and so I, that's one of the things I'm I'm you know getting out of being you know in, in a place that has uh I, 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 I wish I could show you some of these pictures. They're just, they're insane, some of these boats. But anyway, um, it's been a great time down here. Looking forward to getting back. You can only do so much sun for so long. And then, you know, uh, you got to get back and get and, and get things cranked. I've got a lot of stuff to do when I get back and a lot of, uh, a lot of people I need to talk to. So, hey, Hilton, good to see you, my friend. All right. Excellent. Anybody else have anything else they want to add? Or subtract as we go. I know the corporate call is coming up, ctfowebinar.com at 9 p.m. Eastern. Hey, Hilton. Who's who's leading that? <laughs> I'm not sure who's, who's going to be on that one this week. I'm not, I, I don't know. I checked the email. Uh, probably did come through right. on the email, but uh, should be an opportunity. Stu's, problem. Stu's doing it. Is it Stu? Stu? Okay, great. There you yes. Go. Right. Doesn't get much better than Stu. All right. Could we just um no. when you're in Antigua, are you able to is Antigua a distribution center for uh for CTFO products or not? Unfortunately, no. Um we don't ship to any of the islands. But the good news is I'm meeting people from Canada and I'm meeting people from the UK. Um yeah. there are not that many people from the United States in Antigua right now. Mostly mm. Canadians and People, Europeans mostly, that's what I'm finding. Everyone's and CTFO lie. distribution countries are which ones again? Canada, US, UK? Um, if you South go America? to the pull down, if you go to the pull down on your website, you can see them. It's just a- uh, yeah, I no. wish I could. <laughs> um, well, we can do that another time because I, I, I'm not okay. sure that I can get there right this second. But yeah, that's- No uh, problem. They're mostly, they're mostly European countries. Uh, All right, mostly. and lastly, the new president that came on to CTFO, he was formerly with Herbalife, is that right? No, uh, not at all. Oh, so who's the president that uh, CTFO- You're talking about, um, you're talking about Kevin Fournier. Kevin Fournier was with Free Life International. Brought that company to a oh. billion dollars in sales. Worked with him for okay. over 15 years there. Yeah. All right, so and he's he's the star. Uh, yeah, he knows, he knows what he's manager. doing. And like a lot of the changes that you're seeing, I mean, look, the smart ship went uh, into effect and revenue for February because of smart ship is up double digits. So already that's kicking in. If you haven't figured out smart ship yet, make sure you do. It's just a much less expensive way to buy your products. Uh, and it will ensure a culture in your business that creates you a residual income so that you can go on trips and do things. Okay. Could you, um, could you edify for, for me, for us, if it's valuable for everyone, uh, Kevin Fournier and, you know, and how long he's been at, as CTFO aside with the quick ship, what are some of the other changes he's made? And I just, I'm looking for that history because I don't have a- Yeah, a, no a problem. Good... So, so here's what I, I'm gonna give it to you kind of in a um, uh, broad strokes about it because Kevin, you know, Kevin's been here for about, five, six months now, um, you know, his experience in running a company that went to a billion dollars in sales is important because he's already been there and knows what it takes and knows what systems need to be in place. And so as he has been uh, the president of 
CTFO, he's starting to put those systems in place. Smart ship is one of them. Distribution, uh, where we ship out of things like that. Uh, the right people, he's hiring the right people for the right jobs. Just really putting the putting the framework together as he knows it needs to be in order to bring this to a billion dollar company as well. So that's what Kevin is doing. He does an amazing job of it. And he's also doing a lot of training. You know, there's a lot of training that's happening um, for new people that Evelyn Monrog and uh, Kevin Fournier are doing on a regular basis. I believe those are on Monday nights. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, um, it's uh, actually, it's, it's in the afternoon, I believe. So I, I'd have to double check that, but yeah. And are you familiar with the uh, revenues of uh, CTFO the last, each of the last three years? I remember before being 80 to 100 million, you know, and what's the projection for this year? I don't actually know the answer to that. Um, Hilton, that's a great question. And, you know, my guess is that we're probably somewhere around 10 million a month in sales, something about that neighborhood there. Yep. So can we get a graph and, or, you know, like um, the actual facts, you know, the last three to five years and what the projections are from Kevin Fournier for this year? For the next three years, you know, like it's great to say a billion dollars from 100 million, but what's the actual path to it? Right. Year by year. So because with entrepreneurs, you know, I want to be able to enroll them yeah. in we have a great weaver, not a leader, not because I say it, but and not just because of what he's done, but because I'm able to share the plans he's, he's working on implementing. Yeah. You know, what we can do with those, with those kinds of people, Hilton, is we can actually put them on the phone with Kevin. And that's the best way to handle that because everything is very new now. So to, to say we're going to have a chart like that, I, I can't, you know, guarantee it. It's a privately held company. Mm -hmm. So they're probably not going right. to start like that together, but you can get them on the phone with Kevin and you can do a Zoom. We can set that up. And so if you've okay. got people like that, be glad to do that with you. Okay. I have several high level people that are now coming out on Saturday and I'm, I'm basically just getting entrepreneurs engaged that have built businesses okay, and good. are open to building one with me now. Awesome. Well, I look forward to talking with them and if uh, they seem interested and open, we can certainly put them on the phone uh, or do a Zoom with Kevin Fournier. And I think that's- And do you, rec do, you, do you recommend that we do that just one-on-one -on -one with each of the entrepreneurs I have? Yeah, or do we one do on, group one on one. one. You wanna do them one-on-one, -on -one, Hilton. You wanna do them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, treat each person, give them the due respect that they deserve uh, as far as a, uh, you know, a leader goes, if they've got experience. It's okay yeah. to do things in a group fashion once they're involved and, you know, that kind of a thing. But I would do it one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. All right. All yes. right. And um, so that we're not wasting any time, what's your recommend for that type of a, uh, an initial call? Is that 20 minutes, 10 minutes? Yeah, or, the initial uh, call minutes? would be a three-way call with me, uh, maybe yeah. for 20 minutes or so. And, and you know, we can just kind of ask the right questions and find out where they're at. And if they're serious... And they want to, you know, talk to the president of the company. We'd be happy to set that up. Mm, all right. Perfect. All right. Okay. You got it. Got hey, it. we're in your hill. We're in your corner. We we can make amazing things happen if you've got the right people. Love to help you bring them on board. Okay. okay well, we'll see. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. <laughs> That's right. Excellent. Thanks. Appreciate right. that. Let your light shine. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> all right, Hilton. All right, so uh, thanks everybody for joining us. We appreciate you all, and um, we'll all see you on next Tuesday Night Live back in cold Connecticut. <laughs> everybody have a great night. Thanks for joining me here in Antigua. Adam Levy signing off. Everybody have a great night. Bye-bye for now.